The impact of acute rheumatic fever, ARF, and rheumatic heart disease, RHD, is often under-recognized in Australia. Information for this introductory video is derived from the 2020 Australian Guideline for Prevention, Diagnosis and Management of Acute Rheumatic Fever and Rheumatic Heart Disease, 3rd edition. The learning objectives are to define acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease, identify people at highest risk of acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease, what are acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease? Acute rheumatic fever is an acute condition that can cause joint pain, carditis, fever and uncoordinated movements called sydenham chorea. Occasionally, skin rash or nodules may occur. It may only last days or weeks, but the damage caused to the heart can be permanent. When acute rheumatic fever causes damage to the heart valves, this is called rheumatic heart disease. How do these conditions come about? Strep A bacteria causes an infection in the throat or skin. If this is left untreated, then a few weeks after the Strep A infection, there might be an abnormal immune response to the infection. This inflammatory response can result in acute rheumatic fever. Repeated Strep A infections can trigger more episodes of acute rheumatic fever, called recurrent acute rheumatic fever. Each time this happens, more damage can be done to the heart valves, and rheumatic heart disease can get progressively worse. Some children and young adults might not have their symptoms of acute rheumatic fever recognized, so it might not be diagnosed. For a number of these young people, an echocardiogram later in life might reveal rheumatic heart disease. Who are most at risk of ARF? Anyone living in a community with known high rates of ARF. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples living in rural or remote settings. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and Maori and Pacific Islander peoples living in metropolitan households affected by crowding or lower socioeconomic status. People with a personal history of ARF or RHD and aged less than 40 years. Other people who may be at higher risk include migrants or refugees from low or middle income countries and their children. ARF is most common in children aged 5 to 14 years and affects girls more than boys. How can ARF and RHD be prevented? There are opportunities to prevent ARF and RHD along the disease pathway. Primordial prevention aims to reduce the risk of strep A infections. This is related to the social determinants of health. Primordial prevention of strep A infections includes healthy housing and sanitation, reduced household crowding, and reliable access to washing facilities and health services. In some communities, environmental health officers support these healthy environments. Primary prevention aims to stop the development of acute rheumatic fever following a strep A infection. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health staff are well placed to identify and treat skin sores and sore throats in people who are at high risk of acute rheumatic fever. Secondary prevention aims to prevent future strep A infections and the recurrence of acute rheumatic fever. In Australia, the recommended primary and secondary prevention treatment is penicillin. Penicillin kills strep A and is effective at preventing recurrent ARF. It is safe to give during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Once a person has had acute rheumatic fever, they are more likely to get it again. And each time they get it, more damage can be caused to the heart valves. People with RHD need a multidisciplinary approach to their care. For many years, they will require regular medical and specialist checks and secondary prophylaxis. A balance is required between clinical and cultural competence, keeping the patient at the center of care. In summary, ARF is caused by an immune response to a strep A infection. RHD is permanent damage to the heart valves following acute rheumatic fever. ARF and RHD are preventable. 
people at highest risk of acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease can be identified and require active strategies for prevention.